Good afternoon, everybody. It's John Kirk here. How are you? I'm here with Andrew Dawson, who is the president of the Sunwing Vacation uh, Business here in Toronto. Correct? Correct. <laughs> I yes. guess. Thank Got you. Right? Yeah. Uh, and we are here today on a very cold, wintry, minus 10, minus 9, feels like minus 15, I think. Snow tires? Snow tires are on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Seriously, are you gonna have a run at me too? About my yeah, trip? Everybody else has. Oh, that's nice. Very kind. Very kind. And we just I just picked Andrew up at the uh, the Sunwing offices, and my goodness, that space, your new offices are incredible. Thank you. It's a huge. Uh, yeah, it's been a long while, but it's it's, uh, it's good. Interior is beautiful. So uh, <coughs> the cold is finally here. Yeah. There must be people high five and then celebrating all over in the office. <laughs> yeah. How how much does that impact business? No, it's uh, it re it's almost like turning a tap on the day, not the day it snows, the day after it snows, people get motivated to book. So this is great for us, especially when you think Christmas Eve last year, people were golfing. That's true. Yeah. That's true. In fact, did I? No, I didn't golf Christmas Eve. I did golf after Christmas though. Yeah. So definitely, I mean, it has a major impact. Right. Yeah, away. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And it's well needed because the last two or three winters haven't been. The no, best. No, definitely you know, not. When it comes to the weather and booking trends for sure. I got a, a question I want to ask you about uh, Tico. Okay. And uh, maybe a little bit, <laughs> God, maybe a little controversial, <laughs> but uh, you're in the hot seat. So literally, because, yeah, I, think because I am it, actually. I know it's there. Right. Okay, yeah, yeah, turn that off. Uh, <laughs> it's the heated seat. So Tico uh, just announced um, uh, recently the all-in pricing mandate that's, uh, that has come into effect uh, and regulated. What, what are your thoughts on that? How do well, you feel about that? We have to go to all in pricing on on the 1st of January, it, uh, in line with other Canadian tour operators. Uh, it wouldn't really be much of a problem for us. I mean, it allows people to see the end price, allows people to actually make the comparisons. My problem is that that only regulates the good guys. So we're up against hoteliers, foreign websites, sites in US dollars that don't have to abide by the same rules. So it seems to me that we're actually making the people who are paying into Tico fund are actually being made on, you know, uncompetitive in comparison. And uh, to me, they've lost sight of how people buy travel today. Because I guess yeah. you're referring to somebody does a Google search for hotel Moon Palace, let's say, yeah, and the search results in Google will come back with multiple, multiple the hotels players. all on websites, stuff in US dollars, sites from Colombia, you name it. And then you don't think yeah. the price comes in. Yeah, I guess that's that's certainly a different perspective to to, yeah. to put it in. And uh, in general terms, I mean, from a Canadian's perspective, from an, an agent's perspective, who our audience is here, do they? Uh, I, I assume everybody's going to be quite pleased about all in pricing the way that it's positioned. Uh, it's going to get rid of that kind of sticker shock where somebody buys the the ninety nine dollar last minute seat to Jamaica and then finds that the price is five ninety five yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. 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 So it's certainly going to take that away. It's going to make it look a lot more kind of professional. But yeah, I still have a lot of concerns. So what about? Uh, I'm going to ask you. Well, it's not controversial because if you mention the word Trump, you're in trouble, no matter what. So. A, it's a two a two tiered question, I guess. Cuba, you know, what's what's going on in Cuba with the uh, the relationship with hotels and the destination, and in general terms, since the uh, since the Trump government has come into play, or wow, oh, oh, there we go. Sorry. Well, yeah, I don't think we're going to be seeing Trump in Cuba anytime <laughs> soon. Yeah, a lot of Americans do still, but with some wing, but yeah. he doesn't seem to be mm. there yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, We've seen American American Airlines went in, in uh, literally, in uh, with a lot of fanfare, and they're now cutting service back already. Uh, they can't they can't get the numbers. I think that initial kind of hump, that attraction of Cuba uh, for Americans, has gone. That showing off because you're the first people to go, and you're almost doing something kind of like uh, clandestine or whatever, has passed now, huh. and, uh, and and numbers are really off. At our Vacation Express company, we cancelled. Uh, some February departures actually for Cuba, which uh, really uh, for the first time, just because there wasn't demand. That's amazing. Yeah, amazing. so we've seen that slow down. I think uh, people are a little nervous. They'll wait and see what Trump does, but I can't see that the the extension of everything, the 
any further momentum on what's happened. Do you think his um, his coming into uh, power and being brought on as president has had any impact on that? But do I think it'll probably have people who are a little bit more nervous to travel that weren't travelling. There are like 12 ways that you can travel legitimately yeah. and you kind of people were bending the rules on them a little bit. Mm. I think people might be a little bit, bit more nervous. These are Americans does it, about did, bending those rules. Did the... Uh, did, did this... Uh, from a hotelier's perspective, did it have any impact on the decline in business in the U.S. if it's in fact a decline, if it's, it can be deemed as a decline yet? Has that impacted the hotel partnerships at all in terms of room night production? And that well, sort we of certainly thing? we couldn't find a hotel night in Havana for, for the, back, the back end of this year mm. uh, anywhere. Uh, and then that started to spread into Varadero. So we're seeing for this winter that that spread of Americans into Varadero as a base just isn't happening. So there are a lot more rooms available. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Now, it's not it's not reflected itself into rates quite yet, but I'm sure that it will do. I think that the Cubans are going to have to make the destination better value again hmm. because they have been jacking the rates up on the, you know, thinking the demand was going to yeah. increase. It's funny because I did hear from a friend in Florida that the, the Cuban vote in the state of Florida, it was actually a huge, oh, right. uh, huge impact in the state of Florida and the election polls. Right. Yeah, because they were, you know, anti-democratic, I guess, because of the position that Obama administration put into place. So, what about hotel expansion? Obviously, huge growth for you guys within within the group. And yeah, what's it, going on there? It's uh, we almost uh, <laughs> the progress has been stunning. Uh, and very proud to see uh, stunning stunning <laughs> they are okay <laughs> what a great word to attach to it yes in the in the top 25 hotels in the caribbean that just came out there's three of our hotels in there which really? uh, which is fantastic uh, we've got new openings coming up in the spring uh, to hideaway and royalty in st lucia the same in the grill on that gorgeous bay where rio palace tropical oh, right bay in bloody is, bay yeah, there the old the site of where the Grand Lido used to be, exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. That's going to be beautiful. Huh. Uh, and we just opened Royalton Blue Waters uh, in Montego Bay, mm. this, or outside Montego Bay at the site of the uh, the White Sands. Oh now fully opening, uh, wow. getting great reviews. Yeah, and there's more coming. Any uh, <laughs> any leaked info on what do you got planned? Leaked there info. One? Well, there's certainly there's uh, there's land acquisitions taking place in uh, you know in Cancun more Punta Cana or Punta Cana's doing doing great so yeah great those places we've got plans out uh, work going on in Costa Rica at this moment for a first Costa Rica hotel and there's gonna be more huh. coming magnificent and with vacation Express yeah in uh, Atlanta that, that's very it's interesting because that's had a lot of Canadian hands in there over the last 10 years yeah uh, to, to say the least, yeah, please. and they, 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 yeah. those hands too, actually. Um, yeah. How many, uh, how many times have, uh, have you been involved in well, the acquisition my, or sale is, of that business? This is my second go, actually. Yeah, uh, and it's the same guys down in down in Atlanta, so they're pretty sick of me. But we've uh, we've made a real go of that business. That business is booming now. In uh, in Vacation Express, they had like. 30% growth last year. It's, it's it's doing very, very well. The US market is doing well as well. Uh, and then of course, it gives us people to put in, especially in summer, into the Blue Diamond hotels. It all hmm. comes together. So whilst Canadians are filling rooms in, in, in big numbers in winter, you've got TUI coming in uh, with a lot of people in summer, and Vacation Express in summer as well. So it really, it gives you a leg up for the hotels. Now is that a for, is Vacation Express? Is that a Canadian-owned? Totally business? owned by Can, by so? Sunwing Travel Group. And yeah. do most uh, most American agents and consumers know that? Do you think, or is it? Uh, I think they know the ownership, and they'll have seen um, the Sunwing Airlines flights that we've done yeah. in the past there. Uh, but we're going to make that Sunwing branding a lot more prominent with Vacation Express going forward. And do you have air, do you have, uh, you, you have, I mean, you do that great, great advantageous, I guess, with respect to uh, aircraft utilization and off, off peak, do you flip back and forth? Or? Yeah, we flip back and forth between both uh, uh, 
Uh, both markets, yeah. Cool. So we've been running from the US. Yeah, because I was in the Bahamas recently and I, I, I saw Sunwing aircraft there before the devastation that took place with that yeah. hurricane. But I, I had no idea. At one point you were running up to, I think, seven to ten flights. We were running a week into, in, into in Grand the, Bahama. Yeah, from all, all points in the eastern US, even as far away as Texas, actually. Yeah. Wow, amazing. Yeah. Well, okay, I think that just about covers it. So we're going to go and uh, have the uh, mandatory lunch. Okay. <laughs> and uh, keep hopefully, your eyes on the keep, keep, uh, hopefully, oh, cops. <laughs> yeah, you can see him just pass by. Uh, and hopefully all the bad weather continues. Yeah, for the yeah, we need another three months of this. I, I think. think it's yeah. I think it's going to be on. It's going to interfere so, with my so. golf game. Maybe yeah. it doesn't come too soon. Oh, you have to go away with us. <laughs> hang in, oh! hang in, hang in. Oh, <laughs> there you heard it. You heard it here live. Yeah. Anyways, thank you very much for, right. for watching, everybody. Thank you, John. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, buddy. And uh, we'll see you next time. See you later.